And so you're listening to Jenna Query is on 100.5 FM, CFRO, Vancouver's Cooperative Radio. And joining us now is Adrian. Adrian, go ahead, introduce yourself and let us know your pronouns. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Adrian Smith. I'm a Vancouver social justice lawyer. My pronouns are they, them, and I do law for our community. Yeah, you do a ton of work and, and it needs to be respected. And I think you definitely are respected, but you know, always more call outs and more thanks is, is, is super important. Thank you for doing everything that you're doing. And for this week, the Twitter trolls are mad at me. Yes. So yeah, the tr- Twitter trolls are mad at you. And uh, do you want to explain why? <laughs> yes. Uh, let me start by giving some background on what hap- what existed before, before I explain what the change was. So yeah. in BC, it is possible for trans people to change the gender marker on your birth certificate if you're born here and other ID that the government issues like a service card or a driver's license or BC ID, depending on whether you drive. The choices traditionally had been M and F. Mm -hmm. In the old days, trans people used to have to prove that we had had sterilizing genital surgery before a person could change their letter. Yeah. That changed. And instead of having a surgeon operate on you, and in some jurisdictions, another doctor has to also examine you to make sure your surgeon wasn't lying. Yeah, that was great. That's like the only medical. Yeah. Amazing. Um, All of this is based in the presumption that trans people are fraudulent and lying and that we should not be believed. So BC took away the surgical requirement, but they made it so that you had to have a form filled out by a doctor that says the new gender marker that you want is appropriate. And then BC added a third option. So you can choose M, F, or X in BC. So recently, the Parliamentary Secretary for Gender Equity, whose name is Grace Lohr, announced that they were doing away with the doctor certificate. So that's a positive change. They're going to believe us now. Uh, There's still an annoying application process that requires that people apply and pay a fee and mail things and they have the ability to print forms. I think what should happen is people's names and gender markers should be as easy to update on ID as your address. When you just enter a new info and they send you a sticker, I'm working to try and persuade the government of my opinion about this. Um, I think our human rights protection requires an easier process. So they've made this change that's going to be, it's going to have an impact on our community because lots of us don't have a doctor. Some mm-hmm. folks have been having to pay a for, pay to have the form filled out, even though it's just one page. That can be up to $100. Yep. Um, and telling your doctor that you're trans and that you want a new gender marker is also not something everyone can do. So it's a good step. Uh, It's going to make it easier for people to change their gender marker. This is all very separate from the name change process, which still needs some work. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think one of the good things coming out of this announcement is that they're willing to talk to us about how both of those processes can be further improved. So I'm feeling kind of optimistic about it. Right. Yeah. And, and 700,000 British Columbians don't have a family doctor. So, yeah. you know, we're kind of, especially if you're trans, you're forced, forced to go to like a walk-in clinic and like, you know, you've seen this person exactly once and they're not going to write the letter for you. And, and like, yeah. there's other important healthcare things going on in the world right now, other than yeah. having doctors fill out forms as a yeah. hurdle based on the assumption that we can't be trusted. I know you do a lot of work for the Catherine White Holman Wellness Center as part of their uh, legal clinic. And Catherine White Holman Wellness Center offers uh, assistance with legal name changes as well, right? Absolutely. It's the only place in British Columbia where you can see a trans lawyer for free. Yay. We give people legal advice on all, all areas of law. Um, but I, I don't want to say we specialize, but something we see a lot of is yeah. um, helping folks with name and gender changes. It is, I think I don't talk about this enough, but we got this very generous grant from Van City that we can use to pay the application fees for people Please. who want to change their name and their gender um, in BC or in another province. Because I know that the cost is prohibitive, yeah. as is the process. So there's a lawyer there to help you. That's me or my colleague Gwendolyn. And we're happy to meet with people by video. So we don't have to breathe on them. Equally, if folks don't have access to Wi-Fi or video or equipment like that, they can send us an email at lawyer at cwhwc.com. 
although I recognize that's different cult if you don't have the internet yeah. and uh, we'll arrange to see folks face to face if we need to and uh, other community groups like Pace and Atira where folks tend to go I'm really happy to go down and meet people there also Rainbow Refugee is another place that we work closely with and see folks to help them um, get their name and their gender ID updated as much as is possible um, and often people don't have ID or they have right. ID in a different language or they're not sure if the ID that they have is going to be accepted and we give advice about that. So if folks are thinking about getting an update to their name and gender, come see us, especially questions about what will happen if you are not born in Canada and you have questions about the implications of updating your provincial ID. What does this mean for your refugee or your immigration claim? What does this mean if you ever want to go back to the jurisdiction where you were born? Yeah, um, I would love to help you with all of those things. That's awesome. I like. I know that there's so much confusion and uh, misunderstanding about uh, what people can do, especially if they're refugee status or they're applying for refugee status, and their home countries are, you know, openly transphobic and terrible. So yeah, it's it's good to hear that there's some things that you can do, I, and I know there's some things you can't do, but there's probably more than people think. So if you are stuck in that situation, definitely email lawyer at cwhwc.com. Dot com, dot com. Yeah. Anything else we should cover? I think our community, in addition to name and gender issues, often doesn't have access to good legal information. So I want to point out a couple of resources that are available online. The first is transrightsbc.ca. This is a project of our clinic jointly with what had been Vancouver Coastal Health Trans program and is now the TransCare BC. We maintain this list of legal information and we ask the community what kinds of areas they wanted information about. These are things like sex work, education, healthcare, access to services, employment. And the way the website works is there's a fact sheet that says what your rights are. Then there's a, a mortifying video of me telling you not to talk to the police and that we should close all the jails and bring everyone home. And then mm-hmm. links to organizations that uh, we have vetted to be cool for trans folks to go to who can actually help with problems. So if you're a person uh, in jail, who's having a hard time accessing gender-affirming health care, and you could get to the website, you would see that you're entitled to the same level of care in custody that you would get in the community. Then there's me in the video, and then a link to Prisoners Legal Services that administers legal aid for prisoners, which is an organization that can actually help you get to your issue. So not everybody needs to come see me at the clinic. There are some really good organizations out there, um, and many of them have been quite proactive about reaching out to folks in our community to find out how to be respectful to us. I know that's often a concern when people are going to get help. Right. But if you want to reach me again, the email is lawyer at cwhwc.com. There's a phone number that you can leave a message for us. It's 604-442-4352. And we monitor both of those, although be kind to the hardworking worker bees. If you don't get a response immediately, it's uh, not that we've forgotten you. It's that there's a lot of demand and a little bit of a wait list. Yeah. So uh, if someone, like I know we have some of our listeners are currently incarcerated. And if they want to reach out, uh, you mentioned Prisoners Legal Services. Yeah, the number for prisoners legal services is printed on all the ranges in all of the jails in BC. It's also listed in all the federal prisons for folks who may be in federal custody. And the first call is to legal aid to see if you're covered. That's usually routine if you have an active issue. Then prisoners legal services will take your call and you can talk to a a lawyer or an advocate there about what's going on with you. And some things they can't do, but a lot of things they're best placed to solve stuff. This is true, especially if you're being disciplined for something or if you feel like you're being discriminated against because you're trans. Uh, do give them a call and see what's up. If you want a second opinion, you're very uh, welcome to call me, but they're experts on what's happening there. I do take referrals from them if somebody wants me to take their discipline case, um, yeah. if you want a trans person. Um, equally, if folks are being held in mental health detention, if you're in um, psychiatric jail at a hospital, the number for the Community Legal Assistance Society Legal Advocate line is a thing you have a right to, and you can ask for that number and talk to a lawyer. They have a, a program and their resource to help folks. But if you would like to talk to me, I'm also really happy to, to help folks and to represent you if you're being held against your will in mental health detention and you think you shouldn't be there. Yeah. And uh, what, was, what was your phone number again? The uh, clinic phone number is 604-442-4352. 
and the class mental health number is posted in hospitals where people will be. If it's not there, say, I want the lawyer phone number and they have to give it to you. And I know one thing, like when you're arrested, sometimes you don't have immediate access to medication, you know, between the time you go to in front of a judge. Is there anything you'd recommend for trans people, people on, you know, mental health drugs, uh, people on insulin or other medications that are essential? Uh, is there anything you'd recommend that they do to make sure they yes. can get their medication? Yes, there's this very clear identified danger that when people get arrested in community and taken to wherever they're going to be held, there's a delay before they get adequate health care, but they're in custody so they can't take care of themselves properly. And I've heard from folks who didn't get antipsychotic meds or mental health drugs, folks who might not be able to prove that they need insulin, uh, folks who have a delay in getting uh, opiate replacement, um, particularly methadone or something stronger if they're on prescription heroin. And not every facility where you might be held has a nurse. So if you're in RCMP cells, there might not be a nurse even in charge of you before you go to court. If you need medicine and you're in holding, you should call uh, the legal aid number right away and make a nuisance until a lawyer notices and keep asking to see the nurse if there's a nurse, keep asking to see the doctor if there's a doctor, because I'm really concerned about people who are arrested who may not have access to the medication that they need, uh, especially a break in some people's medication can have disastrous consequences for their wellness, uh, for their ability to advise a legal aid lawyer about what's happening if you just don't have the ability to give instructions because you're too sick and folks who need insulin, this could be fatal. Uh, yeah. So I would insist, and I know that there's a reflex and a very smart one, not to make a fuss when we're in jail and not to talk too much to the folks who are holding you against your will. But if you need medicine, make a fuss about needing medicine and ask to see a nurse, tell people what medicine you need. If you know the dosage, that's a helpful thing to share. I think no one packs a bag expecting to need to show what the dose of what meds they're on. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of us need medication in order to survive in the world. So if you're in custody and you think you're not going to be able to get your medicine, ask for it by name, tell people what you need, tell the dose if you need it. If they don't listen to you, keep asking. And if you can reach a legal aid lawyer and say, I'm in custody and I can't get my insulin, that's a, a big red flag and it will lead someone hopefully to help you. If this has happened to you and you've been held in cells and you haven't had your medicine, I would love to talk to you at the Free Trends Legal Clinic. And you can send me an email at lawyer at cwhwc.com and, and tell me how that went. There's a time limit on when we can address things that have happened to you. So if, if this happened to you in the last year, it may be possible for us to do something about it. If it happened to you longer than that ago, I'd still like to hear about it because I'd like to raise it with police and with the courts because this shouldn't happen. And I mean, even they want you to be well. So give a holler. Yeah. If, uh, if that's happened to you or if it's happening to you at the moment. So yeah, good news and hopefully better news coming about new name changes. Oh, there's yeah, your... I'm, I'm, yeah, we're meeting on videos. Your listeners can't see, but my dog has decided to make an appearance and see if there's anything exciting happening. Of course, there's not. He's so bored. So I, I'm really excited that this pointless hurdle to getting better ID has been removed. Yeah. I have not stopped pushing the government to fix all of the other <laughs> barriers that people have to getting ID, especially as it relates to the vaccine passport. Mm -hmm. um, You've done a ton I've, of work on that. That's, I think, been by and large unrecognized and, and you totally need credit for that. It's been a team effort and there's actually some really good folks in government who were horrified um, that <laughs> vaccine passports were issued with the wrong uh, name for people, especially if they'd already done yeah. uh, legal, legal name change. changes. If that's a situation that listeners are in, that your vaccine passport still has the wrong name, uh, there's a phone number that you can call. And uh, first thing you should do is try to download a new passport in case it's been fixed. The second thing you should do is phone this phone number that I'm trying to Google. No worries. Because I want people to have it. And there's a, folks who can help you get a paper copy if you need to have that mailed to you. They can update your record. And they can help you if you don't have a personal health number or if you don't have ID, but you still want to get a COVID vaccine, that's still possible. Or if you don't have MSP and you want to get a COVID vaccine, that's also possible. The phone number is 1-833-838-2323.
and that's for COVID vaccines, passport, passport information, et cetera. Yeah. Updating the things. Yeah. So if folks are refugees or here illegally and they want to get a vaccine shot, there is a way to do this. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And if you are a, a person who can't get out and you're in a place and getting down to a clinic is too hard, the health authorities in British Columbia all have dedicated outreach teams that could visit you in your home if that's something that you need. And a couple of people have come through the clinic and I've connected them with help, but phoning that number will be faster than uh, talking to me. But don't despair if you are got some mobility stuff going on and you can't make it. Right to what the convention center, or you don't want to be in that space with that many folks, they will visit you at home in the same way that a home care nurse, or you may have prescriptions delivered. They'll bring you a vaccine and you can have it at home. Perfect. Well, yeah. thank, thank you so much for all the work you do. And yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see your name recognized, you know, by the government in this uh, latest release. And thanks for all your work. Thanks so much for having me. I just want to thank um, all your listeners who are hanging on in this difficult time. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because I know it's hard every day, but I think every day that we survive, it's a big F you to the haters. And exactly. um, I'm proud of everybody. And I'm really uh, honored to be a member of our community. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks for having me. Keep on kicking ass.